Welcome to The Little White Lie with Karen Glasser. The Little White Lie is all about the lies we tell ourselves about getting older and how to love the age you are in. Join Karen and her guests every week as they share their stories, expertise, tools, and tips on how we can all embrace our authentic self and say yes to embracing our little white lie. Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here. I am the founder of the Little White Lie Digital Network and I'm so happy that you're here. If you're here on replay, that's awesome. Make sure you comment below and put your comments in there and we will respond after the fact because this conversation is gonna keep on going. And as I do in every single show, I'm gonna show you the, uh, the uh, reveal. I'm gonna just put my head down, here we go. And last but not least, if you'd like to share this broadcast, we would love for you to share it. Just click that share button, send it on out, and I will thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also encourage you to go visit my website, thelittlewhitelie.com, and when you post about The Little White Lie, use the hashtag, hashtag The Little White Lie. So today, we're gonna to be asking a question. What are you hiding behind the mask that you wear? And who better than to bring back a good friend, the authenticity guru of all time, Kat Williford. She is a pioneer in the field of coaching and a transformational self-development coach, speaker, and author. She received one of the first six certifications bestowed by the prestigious Coaches Training Institute. She has appeared as a guest expert on The Maury Povich Show, been featured in the Los Angeles Times, and coached live on LA's ABC Talk Radio. So without further ado, I'd like to bring in Kat Williford. Good afternoon, how are you today? I'm great, it's so great to be here with you, Karen. I just love our conversations. I do too, it's always fun to see and hear um, you know, what our, our, our members are saying, what the, what the group is saying, and particularly because we're talking about mass today, and the last time you were on, that was a huge, huge topic, and, and the conversation just kept going and kept going, which is one of the reasons I wanted you to come back. But before we jump into that, I'd like to ask you, what is your little white lie? So uh, a couple of days ago, I had a friend up, um, some, some, someone you know, Stacy Bloodworth, came to visit, and we went to lunch and went for a walk on the beach, and I wound up scorched. I, you can probably still see the sunburn <laughs> on me. And so my little white lie, and, and for some reason I thought like I could get away with it. I don't know. I'm a fair skinned girl. What was I thinking? So the little white lie, what I've discovered, you know, it, when we're in the personal development world, we don't think the box sides of the boxes apply to us because we're, we're upending boxes left and right for ourselves and our clients. So there are still laws of physics and rules of the universe that we must follow. So my little white lie to myself has been, I, I don't have to, I'm above that, which of course <laughs> is BS because now I've got water blisters on my back. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And it happens to all of us. We just think, well, we can do it. It's not, the rules are for everybody else but us, right? That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. So we're, we're asking the question, about masks and what are those masks saying that we're actually hiding behind? So the first thing that I wanna ask you is, is actually, when we talk about masks, what are we actually saying? What does that mean? Yeah, you know, that's a great question because um, a lot of people, I love that your dogs are here. They're, 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 they're into this, they, they wanna know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I came to the idea that it's the masks that we're hiding behind because I came from the world of theater. And so when you think about how original theater was performed, people literally wore masks. The Thespians wore masks because a lot of times men were doing the women's roles because women had even less potential then in some societies. So they're literally things we put on. And in this metaphor that I'm using, it is the way we show ourselves pretty boxed in. You know, we're talking about the box earlier. So those rules that we're living by that aren't ours, the stories that we're living by that aren't ours. So they become what we show to the world rather than who we really are. And we hide behind them because we're smart. Our psyche has developed them to protect us. So we're not bad or wrong for having masks. It's just a problem when we forget to take them off. 
That is such a great answer. And um, so I guess the next question that I want to ask is, so how do we identify our mass? And as you're talking, I'm going to actually put my dogs out of the room. Okay. <laughs> they don't get to join in the conversation. So um, I think the best way to actually uncover the masks and to identify where they're coming from is to look at our timeline. You know, there's a lot of information out there about looking at our timeline and where things originate from. But when you decide, like for me, my big one, biggest one has been the chief operating officer of control. And she loves to take charge, take over, and this, that, and the other thing. And when I take a step back and look, well, so what is she protecting? Uh, and Karen, we can't hear you. Yes, I had myself on mute while oh, my dogs it. were barking. I'm back. I'm back, guys. I'm back. Yay. <laughs> but when we take a step back, it's like, what is it I'm protecting? You know, and I came to right. like a fear of disappointment and a fear of not being in control. And then when you start to look at your timeline, you can see where those instances were in childhood, early adulthood, teenager, where you didn't feel in charge for the, and I'm talking about this specific mask, of course. I think I wear the same mask as you. Yeah. I call, I, and I call myself a control freak and it's a, kind of a negative way to, to actually put it. I kind of like the way you yeah. put it better. Uh, but for me, it really is a matter of feeling so uncomfortable in my own skin if I am not feeling I'm in control of That's the right. actual situation to the point that I actually do the driving in my household because I am uncomfortable sitting in a passenger seat, ra seat rather than driving myself. You guys th that are listening right now, yes. um, what kind of masks are you wearing or what are you hiding? Go put it in the comments. I'd love to put yeah. some of them up on the screen. So we're going to continue the conversation. So what do you, how do you suggest or what do you suggest for people that are going to start identifying those masks? What do they do once they identify it? Yeah. So, I, you know, for some of you, it might not be the chief operating officer of control. It might be something more like the overgiver slash pleaser. Mm -hmm. I've worn that one. Goodness, you know, or we might be wearing the mask of, I call her smarty pants. Like I'm going to be the smartest one in the room and I'm going to prove it to everybody. And I'm going to keep raising my hand and I'm going to keep raising my hand. <laughs> so there's all kinds of masks that we wear out there. And I think the key to taking them off is to actually identify what is the fear because they're really, what I've discovered is masks are covering three things. The hidden, the hidden things are, the, our pain, mm -hmm. we want to hide our pain. And sometimes we don't even want to feel it. So we certainly don't want other people to see it. Um, other times it's because this fear of, of being out of control. So we try to control. The other thing I think we are really hiding behind there is our fragileness, our vulnerability. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree with that. Deanna says that I'm always happy inside when I have been living to have others to, to help others be happy. I think that's what you meant, Deanna. And uh, Drew says she's a pleaser. Big time. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> so how do people connect with you? And also, I would love for you to, to let people know about this event that you're doing in September. And by the way, guys, I'm going to be going. So, Kat, tell everybody about this event you're going to be doing. And I'm hoping that uh, some of our viewers will actually come and join us, right? And meet Kat in person if you haven't already and learn about the masks. The masks and taking them off. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. This is, uh, I haven't gotten to do a retreat for a long time in my business, and I'm so excited for the first time in 10 years to get to do one. Mm -hmm. And this is really, we're going to do a deep dive. It's two days long, and it's, but it's gentle. We're a gentle deep dive full of love and compassion. We're going to be creative together. Um, we're going to have some body movement going on to just really get in our bodies and be who we are and where we are. Um, but it's really to take off that big mask. So, and, so Kat, I want to interject right there because yeah. I want people to understand that I actually had a conversation with you that I was yeah. feeling vulnerable about doing this. Yes. Um, I really, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone in a huge way. So yeah. I, 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 I want you to be listening to what Kat says, and even if it feels uncomfortable, be uncomfortable with me. As Joey <laughs> says, sometimes you have to be uncomfortable to take yeah. the next step. So continue. That's right. 
Thank you. And you know, one of my uh, taglines is, um, your comfort zones can kill you, but being uncomfortable will not. So if you're in that rut, like sometimes those masks can be really big comfort zones. I'm really comfortable being the chief operating officer of control. She knows how to get stuff done, but she also is very lonely and doesn't let other people help her or think she can receive or ask for help, which is a problem when you're a business owner, big time problem. Or if you're working with a team, you got to work with a team. Um, so anyway, I've got this retreat coming up and I want to offer, because we had this show scheduled earlier in the week and we had a tech glitch. So I want to be able to offer my early bird rate, even though it's over right now. Um, I want to be able to offer it to anyone who's interested. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Shoot me a flare on Messenger here on Facebook, Kat Williford, C-A-T-W-I-L-L-I-F-O-R-D. And I would love to have a conversation with you individually to make sure that this is something for you and talk to you about those fears that are going to come up. Because you know what? I even have them. I'm confronting my masks left and right every single day in putting this out there in the world. It's scary. And I'm doing it anyway because I am so passionate and committed that women live into the story that they want to live into and stop living in the past stories because those are going to keep derailing us and not letting us experience what we want to experience in our life. And you deserve that. We oh all God. deserve it. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> I put your email up there so that people can Perfect. actually get to you. Yes. I'm putting your website up as well, catwilliford.com. And you. also I encourage you to go check out Kat's Facebook group the Sisterhood Circle Advantage, and join in. We're all sisters because that's what we are, and we're a tribe, and yeah. tribes gather around each other and support each other. And, of course, if you want to follow Kat on Twitter, you can go to at catwilliford.com. Any last words that you would like to share with our group before we say goodbye? You know what? I don't know. Do you have the address for the um, retreat website? We can um, I don't, there. but if you tell me what it is, I can put it in. www. Uh, authenticity advantage retreat. I think <laughs> she says with a question mark too. I mean, I'll type, I'll, I'll share it in the comments below when we're done. I'll share it in the comments below. That's what I'll do. Um, and last, yes, you know what? Here's my, this is from my heart. You deserve to live free and at choice. And I lived for so long under the tyranny of my mask of control. I was joyless for so long and I, but no one would have known it. And what that did was set up that internal naysayer called the fraud police. And I was scared to death that as soon as I became me, people would haul me to jail. Like I, the fraud police were going to come and haul me to jail. And it's risky and it's scary. It feels risky and it feels scary when you first start to allow that authenticity to roll forward. Mm -hmm. um, and can I just share what I shared with you earlier, Absolutely. Karen, about what I did Absolutely. today? Yes. Like I, I'm 53 and I'm in this place of, you know, where I never thought it would be, which is dating in midlife. And I say dating in midlife and I'm not even dating. Like I want to be dating. And I uh, met someone this morning when picking up my car <laughs> from Caliber Collision. And he was so kind. As, there was something in his eyes and there was something in his smile. And I actually, when I got home, I called the adjuster. It was a, a woman, Sandra Cruz. She's amazing. And I just said, hey, is he single? And she, I said, I never do this, I but I'm it. doing it. And she said, oh my God, he is single. And you're single? Okay, we have your number. <laughs> I have no idea if he's going to call. And at this point, it's not even about that. It's that I, the universe has kept saying, you've yep. got to meet me, girlfriend. You've got to meet me. And so I took that risk and it feels so freeing and it feels, it felt terrifying and it felt freeing. And that's what I want all of us. I want us to be breaking down those Love internal it. barriers that say no so that we can say yes to ourselves. Oh my gosh. I, yes, I, that's an awesome, that's an awesome story. And, and of course I'm going to be following up with you to find out what happened. If anything happened, but you know <laughs> what? You're, here's the thing. You're right. You, ju you just stepped into it. You stepped into your power. You did it. And that could, that's probably is enough right there. Right. Right there. Right Which there. I totally love. 
we want to thank everybody for sharing this time with us because we know that you have a choice as to where you spend your time and you chose to spend it with us and we are eternally grateful. We want to make sure that you go out and give somebody an awesome day and we'll see you next time on the next episode of The Little White Lie. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.